everybody. I'm Kendra. And I'm Autumn. And this is Bumper, Bumper to Bumper. Bumper. Hi, everyone. Look, we've made it back in the time frame that we said we would. Wow, it's miracles a, do happen. It's a Christmas miracle. It turns out, yes, it is. <laughs> um, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time or don't know a lot about this web series, uh, this is Bumper to Bumper, where Kendra and I basically talk about cool, kind of off the cuff topics that we think are really interesting or things that we come across while researching and kind of fall down, uh, of course, the rabbit hole, which we've mentioned literally millions of times <laughs> on this web series. Um, so it's just little tidbits that we find really interesting, really. Yeah. Oftentimes things we can't really discuss too in depth in the museum because we just don't have the room. So. That's true. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these topics could be full, really could be almost full exhibits. Yeah. Yeah. But so. You're getting a full exhibit here. Maybe people. someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Anyway. Another Christmas <laughs> miracle. We'll see. Um, but uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, Want to mention that? We'll mention that a couple times uh, throughout this episode here. Um, you can find us Boyertown Museum on YouTube. It's totally free to subscribe, so uh, no loss there. Uh, we have a lot of really cool stuff on that on the mm -hmm. web series, so please check that out. Uh, but we'll jump right into today. So we've titled this episode "Hot Bricks." And yeah, exactly. I know it sounds like a B rated action movie from the 80s, <laughs> but uh, it's really just that's about next month. That's next month. <laughs> yes. That, yeah, what did we do just now? I don't know. We're going to figure this out now. This could be a cool right. topic. <laughs> um, this one is just about basically how people heated their vehicle uh, or mode of transportation in the early days. Mm -hmm. So, um, first, I guess we should really kind of talk about. Um, you know, how, why people were so uncomfortable in <laughs> early modes of transportation um, and what they, you know, then we'll kind of get into heating and cooling. But there's some reasons, of course, that in the very early days, it was very uncomfortable uh, yeah. to ride in the rail car, in the carriage, um, you know, what, whatever you were riding in at the time. So, Kendra, can you tell us a little bit just about, like, the elements and how people were affected by them in the early days? Yeah, so on, uh, you know, a lot of your early cars, you know, they get this uh, name attributed to them, the horseless carriage, and that, that's for a reason, because it's quite literally a carriage without a horse. They slap a motor on it, or it's very rudimentary, you know. So think of a carriage. There's no heater in your carriage. So logically, why would you put a heater in your early cars? That is not making sense yet, you know. So, um, you know, they and people weren't expecting that. No. That's another big thing, too. You no. know, people aren't getting into these cars thinking they're going to be heated and, and the most comfortable things ever because a carriage or a buckboard or whatever sure wasn't. No. So why would this be any different? Um, you know, so that's, that's a big thing. So let's think about those early cars. And you'll see, you know, you can see this in photos and you can even better see it right here at the Boyertown Museum because we have quite a few examples of cars from the 1900s and 19 teens, especially. And you will see that as a driver or passenger, you're really exposed uh, to the elements in there. Um, you yes. know, the they're just not enclosed, yeah. you know? Um, there, there's no windshields on some of them. Uh, definitely no side windows. Yeah, you know, that's if you a have a point. windshield, you might not have the windows here on, your, on the sides. You know, you're gonna have a lot of canvas tops like your carriages would have. Now, some of them might have like a roll-up curtain or something, but you don't have to think too hard to uh, imagine how that would be like only surrounded by this thin canvas, which is probably also kind of blowing open because it's not that secured anyway. <laughs> you're halfway down the road, so, it blows um, off like, I mean, exactly, that? exactly. So you're just very exposed to everything going on around you. And um, there's just no way to, to, to hide from it. Now, you also have to remember too, you know, driving in the winter time, Maybe wasn't as common at first either. Um, remember, you think driving in the winter is bad now. Yeah. These roads are paved at least. Yes. Um, so, you know, to drive on a dirt or mud road that has slush and snow on it, it's not going to be really something people want to do anyway. And in fact, it was, it was a somewhat common practice to winter your car. Yeah. You know, you could park that in your garage, your carriage house, whatever, 
you know, jack it up for the winter to save to to save the tires and just let the car sit all winter. Yeah. So who needs a heater anyway? That's right. Your car's sitting in for the coldest months of the year. You know, that's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, in the in the early days especially, it's just um, not uh, not common. And it's going to get a little better in the 20s when they start to enclose these cars. And we can get into that maybe a little later in the show. But, um, you know, at first, it's all about just kind of dressing yourself yeah. to prepare. Not necessarily putting something extra in the car to help you get through. So, um, yeah, and there's a lot of fashion oh, things man. that come up at this. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that are making this special clothing designed for motoring, essentially. Yeah. And, um, you know, you'll even see this in the not cold weather because you'll see people driving around in the long, like, usually linen. Uh, almost looks like a linen trench coat. You know, mm -hmm. it goes all the way down to your ankles. And, you know, men and women wore them, even in warmer months, to just protect you from rain. Yes. Or uh, the mud and the dirt. Get kicking up at you. Again, you're not protected really by anything. That's a good point. You know, mm -hmm. when you envision this, think about that. You're also getting dirty. Okay, you're yeah, the very elements dirty. are happening, but that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. You're getting dirty from everything around you. I mean, if you hit a small puddle and you have nothing, you know, enclosing you in that space, you're going to get some shrapnel hit you somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know, you're going to get hit you're by gonna, something. You're going to have some battle scars after that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you're a proper, you know, Victorian-esque woman or, you know, uh, you know, oh, an, an elite woman. You need to protect yourself I from mean, that. if you have one yep. little drop of mud, I yep. mean, you're mm -hmm. just ruined. Well, so. and, you know, probably that's why they, they came up with these things that were all-encompassing because um, you can just shed it when you get to yeah. your destination. And hopefully the nicer clothes that you wore underneath have been unscathed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but there is a warmth element to that as well. Um, and then, of course, in the in the winter, for people that are driving in the winter, maybe they don't have a choice, they need to drive, or maybe they're just... Spontaneous. They're and daredevils, yeah. and they don't care. Yeah. They don't want to jack their car up over the winter, and they'll get in there, and they, they do... You need to stay kind of warm. I mean, yes. you want your... <laughs> What if it's like negative You're dead 10 degrees? You're to operate the different controls and yeah. stuff. So yeah, a lot of it comes down to, in the beginning at least, fashion. So of course, uh, back then too, you know, furs are a little more cultural, very culturally acceptable yeah. and not so much now. Yeah. You'll see lots of furs. And they are thick. Yes, they, they keep are. the little animals they warm. They keep so. that, little, <laughs> that little minx warm. Yes. He's fine. Yes. So um, yeah, lots of furs. Um, Lots of uh, like he the heavy fabrics or even like r uh, rubber, you know? Yes, this rubber. They, We're going to put this up, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this go is ahead. really good about the rubber. Um, so there were things called, well, there were a couple things. One was uh, storm aprons, and we're going to put um, an ad for that up from 1906. And this is a company out of uh, Ohio. And this shows a five passenger storm apron. You'll see it right now when we flash it up. Look at that. All five people in that are covered <laughs> by this rubber, yeah. like Kendra said, yeah. literally rubber thick apron. So you're not getting anything on you with this thing, okay? It's like, I feel like it's like bulletproof or something the way that it looks. It's I think I would sweat after. I know you would. Yeah, I'd probably be cozy and you'd be yeah, dying in there. I'd be dead. Um, but yeah, like Kendra said, they had motor robes, mm -hmm. and they were typically made of fur or cloth. So I know we're going to flash a couple uh, ads up there. Really interesting with this early apparel, of course, gloves, mm -hmm. hats. And as far as the motor robes, too, again, if you come to the museum, uh, you will see a few kind of sprinkled throughout in some of those open cars. And they're usually, you know, a nice... Um, fur on the one side and the other side is like a really thick uh wool wow you know to to keep it together i mean yeah. they're th and they're heavy they are actually that's the other thing they're like my weighted blanket at home 
Maybe it would be good. <laughs> Maybe this would be great. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that way to yeah. break it is awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then I'll, I'll fall asleep while I'm driving because yes. of the weight. Yeah. Me, soothing me. But um, they then they were, now the, the blanket thing, that's kind of a holdover from um, the carriage days too. I mean, carriages and sleighs, they would have things like that. They would sell them. We have a really nice one in our carriage factory that's sitting on a sleigh. Yeah. So if you come visit, take a look at that one. That's true. Um, and you'll notice too in some of the older cars, um, the the back of the drivers, if it's a touring car, the back of the driver's seat has a bar there. That is for your blanket or your robe wow. to lay, you know, to hang. Wow! If you're not using it, so awesome. Cars were planning for this. For this, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. You'll see a couple of those too in the in the gallery. Some. Yeah, we have a good a lot of examples. That's that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. And um, transitioning into the heater portion of it, we have a heater, uh, a, a heater that we'll talk about in a little bit on display um, that uh, is an early car heater. So you'll have to come in and see that as well. I think the point is, wow, there's a lot here at the museum that you guys can see for uh, on this topic. Um, and it's it's interesting because everything's so different um, than it is now. On that, on that part, um, let's talk about why the heck Kendra and I called this episode Hot Bricks. So basically it's because in the very beginning you would use a hot brick to heat <laughs> your, this is just crazy, isn't it? You would use a hot brick or coal and I'm mm -hmm. going to assume in this region, uh, probably <laughs> a lot probably of people did popular, that. very popular, yes. Even over the bricks. Um, but it was basically exactly what you think it is. Someone would, the person, the driver, the motorist, would heat up this brick in either their fireplace or oven, perhaps, and they would put it into this portable heater. So it's like a, and we'll show you on the screen there, but it's a thing that's like typically like this big, and you open the one side and you can put, you slide in, there's a little tray that comes out, and you can slide in the brick or the coal in there. Um, and you put it on the floor of uh, the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It was covered in carpet because why wouldn't it be? It um, doubles as a footrest. It doubles as a footrest. And you know. Who doesn't want a heated footrest? I really do, quite <laughs> frankly. And the bonus of this is it was lined in asbestos. So yeah. really, yeah. where is the loss? There's because no loss here. This is it's awesome. Good. Yeah. It's all good. So it, it'd be covered in carpet. You could get it to match the carpet of your vehicle, which I'm sure people did if they could afford that. Um, like I said, it was lined in asbestos, which was good at the time for the purpose of what it uh, meant, uh, what it was mm -hmm. meant to do. Has brass handles on it there. So you fill it up with the brick or the coal, you put it under your feet, and you, like Kendra said, really, you are resting your feet on there. Now that, with the combination of the robe or the blanket, mm -hmm really isn't terrible. I mean, yeah. it's not that bad. Um, you know, it, it'll, it'll keep you pretty warm. It's not great, um, but it'll do the trick um, for, for, you know, what they're looking for at this time. So there's one called a Clark Auto Heater. Yeah, Clark was a, a big uh, manufacturer of these. Um, that's the brand actually that we have. Um, and yes, it's got the carpeting still on it. It's got the little tray in there. It even has a few pieces of coal inside. Ours oh, does. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll keep your feet warm and heat rises. So uh, the idea yes. is, you know, it'll come off the floor eventually and just kind of get you yeah. the rest of you. Um, uh, and, and we did actually talk about the Clark Auto Heater on a different, uh, program that the museum does and pretty in depth. So... Look in the, the um, description of this video. We'll link to that. You can learn yeah. a little bit more about Clark. Um, but remember, too, still, we're talking about cars that are pretty open. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, uh, it's like you know, when, when uh, your, your parents yell at you for leaving the house door open yes. in the winter where we're not heating the whole town. And, yes. you know, it's kind of what you're doing. You, you know, it's there, but... Your car doesn't have doors or yeah. <laughs> or windows or a windshield or even a nice tight top. It's a fabric top. So all that heat is leaving the car. Absolutely. So that is also kind of, you know, 
not it, defeating the purpose. It's still, but still heating, but it's not being as efficient as it could be. Well, plus, okay, let's say that you have a couple passengers in, in your vehicle or, you know, does everyone get one? I mean, that adds up. I'm sure they weren't necessarily, yeah, really. like, cheap. The front seat and the back seat needs... Yeah, you're <laughs> fighting over that, right? You're calling dibs before you yeah. even get out there. Who gets the heated seat? I get the Clark auto heater. Yeah, <laughs> I can hear my dad. Heat your own brick, you yeah. know, before we go outside. <laughs> so, I mean, there it was It was a cool idea, mm-hmm. um, but it, it didn't really pan out. Mm-hmm. Um, but something that did pan out, not initially, but um, was used in the future, was um, an invention by a woman named Margaret Wilcox. And she's really a really cool lady. And Kendra and I love uh, mentioning stories that connect autos and women. It's no secret. We've done it um, many, many times uh, throughout this web series and on other Q&As that we've done and and various things. And it's really kind of hard to not. um, Women in the early days really invented a lot. There were issues with that in the beginning. You could only patent things up until about 1893 or four in your own or in your husband's name or like your brother's name. So it had to be a man, sigh. So um, there were a lot of patents done by women, but they just weren't getting the credit for them. Because they couldn't. Because they couldn't. Yeah. Now this one woman, Margaret, in 1893, um, really invented what is considered really the first car heater. Now you're saying 1893. She invented this system for rail cars. Okay. That is really what people were riding in at this time. If, if you know, um, if, you, if you were one of those folks that was on the rail car, it was very cold. It was not as cold as outside, of course, but it was pretty darn cold in there. And she was kind of tinkering with an idea of how to warm these rail cars up. Um, so she started out designing and tinkering with a lot of machines from a young age. She was um, very mechanical, very intelligent. Um, and really, she landed on this idea of heating these rail cars. So basically, she started experimenting with this and realized that engin- engines create a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. Okay, we know that. So she could run a channel of air through the engine and then send it back into the rail car. So it's really kind of a genius concept. Yeah. A really genius concept. Um, that one, one that hadn't been considered before this time. Um, and like I said, she was able to receive a patent on this in November 1893. Um, not everyone loved it. It was <laughs> rudimentary. Of course not. Of course not. First of all, well, a of woman. Well, of course it's rudimentary. It's the first one. One, yes. And a woman designed it, so no, no, Give no. Give her a break. <laughs> yes. Um, there was no way to regulate the temperature. So basically what were happen- What was happening mm. is you'd be subject. Get too hot. Yes. Yeah. You'd be getting an onslaught of hot, blasted air at you. So either you had, you know, you had two <laughs> options. You could have really hot air blasting right onto you the whole time you're on the rail car. Yeah. Or you could have really cold fingers and feet. Yeah. I'd take the hot blasting <laughs> air. If you ever come into my office, you'll understand you'll know that. that. But it was a really mm-hmm. awesome idea. Yeah. And the point is that even though this kind of fizzled away, um, her idea was still the basis for car heaters today. Um, it was the idea that engineers took and turned into um, what they later modified into apparatuses that regulated the temperature inside the automobile. So really, she is the beginning of this um, all the way back in 1893, which is really kind of cool. Amazing. Yeah, it is. Now, Amazing. after that, um, vehicles started being equipped with exhaust gas heaters. Mm-hmm. Um can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, that starts about 1906 or so, so more than 10 years after she came yeah. up with that. Um, yeah, exhaust gas heaters, as Autumn said. So the early ones are basically either a raised type or a recessed type. So the raised, it's almost like a footrest uh, and would be mounted on the, the rear uh, compartment floor. The recess type um, is through the floor and the grating on there would be placed flush with the floor. So less of a trip ha- hazard. Yeah, but that's also, a good way to put not it. not a good footrest. No, it's not. And I'm really into this heated footrest idea. Me too. So Maybe we have something here. Maybe we can that recess it. thing. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that's no, that that's peanuts. I don't like that. And you'll, <laughs> you'll see these grates too. Aren't there various different kinds of grates that 
like you'll see all yeah, the vehicles yeah, too, kind of. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, um, and, and and we have one that I think is kind of like this, a, a Kunkel. Yes. Uh, which is on display in the museum in one of the cases, which has a case that has a lot of uh, accessories and, and um, early anti-theft stuff. Now, I think those are made specific, specifically for Ford, which makes sense. Almost yeah. everyone's driving a Model T, so that would give you the most money. Yes. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's funny. Um, I, if anyone out there listens uh, to Car Talk, which I listen to all the time growing up. Now the one brother has passed away, but you can still listen to the podcast. It's mm -hmm. old episodes. And I always remember him saying, uh, Tom, the one who's passed away, I, he said a couple times, heat is one of the few things you can get for free. Oh, awesome. And I mean, essentially what you're doing is just venting yes. engine yes. heat, you know, the air from there, which is heated up because as you said, engines run really hot, venting that into the compartment and hopefully, you know, heating you guys up, yeah. heating the riders up. Yeah. Um, now the early heaters, you know, they're not the cleanest things um, and uh, they get dirty, yeah. you know, and there's really no, no good way to clean them. Um, they, the odor, I mean, you know, think about a car now has an odor. Yeah, it does. Okay. When it runs, that there's fumes. Yes. An older car is probably even worse. worse. And yeah. also the gasoline was different. You know, it wasn't quite as refined or whatever. Stinkier and, and yeah. exactly. So that's people don't like that too much. It's not ideal. And then it gets in your clothes, I'm sure. Just like yeah, cigarette smoke point. gets in your clothes. Yeah. All that gets in your clothes. Um so the early heaters uh were basically, you know, um radiators made of bundles of tubes through which pass the exhaust gas. It's literally a radiator that you see mm -hmm. in your house. Yeah. But kind of like for a car. Yeah. I mean, honestly. So they're usually uh, covered with a grate made of nickel plated iron or the polished aluminum. Mm -hmm. with, typical. Mm -hmm. um, and the control was usually um, a valve attached to the exhaust pipe and operated by a handle or maybe a lever that would be on the floor of the car. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no thermostat, obviously, but they are trying to control. Yeah, that's A little true. bit that yeah blast of heat you know and you know maybe if you get too hot you can cut it off for a little bit that's true turn it back on when you get cold again yeah um they weren't always necessarily made for a specific car um but you know the ads basically stated hey you can have this done in 45 minutes and don't know and you don't need to know what you're doing that's what i love about these ads oh yeah Ear, it, do you believe that what does it say <laughs> yeah inexperienced yeah. mechanic Inex yeah exactly okay <laughs> Does that mean I can put it in? Because yeah, I'm really. sure I can't. <laughs> and uh, you know, we're, we have uh, an ad there for uh, a motor car, the motor car heater company. Heater. Heater. <laughs> when I was typing they this out, I stayed up was all right? night to think that name, didn't they? <laughs> but it says, you know, quote, your motor car with pure, fresh air. So, was it? Yeah. I'd love to know Probably that. Not. Especially because the air outside at this time is not necessarily, I mean, the mm. freshest either. If you're driving through the city, I mean, you know, where there's horses Horses! And, and yeah, yeah. things like that. I don't oh, know how fresh yeah. the air is, but um, improvements were beginning to be made mm -hmm. in, in this area. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and like Kendra said, we have examples of this throughout the museum gallery of, of mm -hmm. these various heaters. So, you know, if you guys come in, please, please check those out. Um, jumping into the late 30s, there. Oh, now, before you get to the yeah. 30s, just real quick, and to, remember, too, that now, before the starting about the 20s, really, cars become more enclosed. Yeah, that's true. Um, we should touch on that. You're, you're going to see more uh, hard tops. You're going to see windshields and windows on all over around the car. So um, that right there is going to warm them up yeah. already because now you're not heating the whole town, you know, as yes. dad would say, as yes. you run out the front door. Yes. Uh, because, you know, you and then hopefully you know, your passengers, you're all now in there. You're just by existing in there are creating body heat. And now hopefully it's staying in a little more. Yeah. Uh, it's still cold. But yeah. um, we talk about this and how that enclosed car affected 
dating and courting in another episode of our show, which we'll also link to. You should definitely check yes. that one out. That's a good episode. That's anyway, no, that they're is, all good, but that one was really that good. was a really good so, episode, and it affected this too, just your comfort yes. level. So yes. yeah, but then things change a lot in the '30s. They do. Um, so there's just a couple things that you know, Kendra, I want to touch on in the '30s here. Nash, which is um, a uh, a fan favorite of Kendra of and mine. We um, like Nash's. We love Nash's. Uh, they advance climate control using filters and much finer controls that allowed the motorist to really regulate the airflow and the temperature inside the vehicle. Because like Kendra said, 37 now, vehicles are enclosed, okay? So by this time, really heater cores were the norm uh, because gas heaters were costly and frankly risky. So people started realizing that's not a great idea. And if you're going to enclose the car, <laughs> you need to really tackle this dirt and yes. odor issue because now it doesn't, it can't escape yes. either. <laughs> exactly. Easily yeah. As it, it was. And you're so, all like yeah. under the same robe. Yeah. It's like disgusting in there. I don't even want to know. Yeah. It's just gross. Yeah. So um, later on then, uh, GM introduced the car seat heater in 1939, which is actually, to be honest with you, wow, that's it, earlier than early. I would have thought. I'm, su I'm surprised by that. Me too. Yeah. GM was, I mean, they were on and top of Honda it. My Honda still doesn't have one. My Kia doesn't have one either. What the heck? Come on, guys. What the heck? We're going to have to get one of those hot bricks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll have Dan, the maintenance guy, heat up a brick for us every day before he will, we go. too. He would, too. <laughs> um, but they, they start with the car, uh, the heated seats of the vehicles around 1939. Now, a neat tidbit on this. The Second World War was really a major catalyst in this, actually, because for the first time, military vehicles were able to provide comfort for the troops fighting in cold weather. Mm. So this cemented the current design and heating and of how we heat things and climate control in vehicles. Because during the war, um, we wanted our boys, you know, to be comfortable, and this was a big deal because. Out of, okay, yeah, you're on the road here, you know, on your way home, you're a little cold or hot, whoop de doo You're on the front lines, you know, you're fighting for your country. It was actually a really neat thing um, that these people were able to be comfortable in their military vehicles overseas and, and here uh, as well. So that was kind of a neat little thing. And, and lastly, Cadillac was the first maker to provide fully automatic climate controls, adjusting interior temps to those outside. So it actually adjusted with the temperature outside the vehicle, which is really kind of cool. Yeah, that's big. It's big. big. It's a big deal. So we got Nash, we got GM, and we got Cadillac in the 30s and early 40s on the front lines of what we know today as a car heater, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously, you know, today's uh, heat, Heating systems are, in, they're in every car. You know, this isn't an aftermarket yeah. accessory. My gosh, can you imagine trying to sell a car today no. without heat and air conditioning? No. Ah! Oh, who would buy that? Yeah, <laughs> it's just I would expected now. Yeah. Um, so the heating systems today now also are, you know, the, the AC units um, are incorporated with that as well. And, and this is so you can keep the cabin temperature controlled uh, regardless of the outside, and, you know, my car still has the the actual manual dials, but yeah. now there's digital readouts. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously it's going to keep getting more and more precise, absolutely and, uh, complex. So the systems today are complex already. Yeah, lots of vacuum motors, um, uh, heating, cooling ducts, uh, control systems. When it and um, you know when it, but it, when it comes right down to it. The basics are still there. You know, the hot air that comes out of your car's vents right now to heat you in the cabin is uh, still heated by the engine's radiator coolant system. Yeah. It's just done in a lot fancier, schmancier way. Yeah. And probably more expensive, and then they can charge you more for exactly. it. And, you know, it just exactly. it goes on and on. Exactly. But, but uh, yeah. yeah, and now obviously a lot more sensitive to... Uh, the the driver or passenger, whoever's desire to change the temperature, you know, all for good reason. And cars too, I think, retain all that they better do. too than obviously than they do. You're wood bodied with a steel, yeah, skin. Yeah, basically. exactly. <laughs> yeah, very thin skin. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, it's interesting because you know, you mentioned like you know how things have changed today, and they adjust to the certain person. 
you know, there's vehicles, and I think actually my husband's has one. Each seat is different. So, like, yeah. I'm always cold. I can keep my seat warm. His isn't. I mean, it's interesting that there's individual um, mm -hmm. heating as well. From what I was reading on the Cadillac, the early Cadillac, it was pretty much you heated the two front seats Everything. or you didn't. Mm. So now it's interesting because, you know, if Kendra and I are both in the same car, you know, we can be heated um, or not a little differently. And um, just a lot of advancements. I mean, yeah. Margaret started this in 1893. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, really um, did come a long way, but the basics are still there, like Kendra said. Yeah. So, geez, I hope we hope you this warmed you up here in, yes. the, in the cold PA temps this yes. episode. Thank you for joining us today again for another episode of Bumper to Bumper. We look forward to coming back um, with another cool topic. Yeah. <laughs> cool topic. <laughs> Just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of ideas tumbling around in our heads about uh, topics for this year or coming up yeah. in 2022. We're filming this in December. You'll, you'll probably be first debut it in January. Yes. Uh, so we have things rolling around in our heads that we're thinking about and uh, they all are pretty neat, we think. They are. I think so. That's right. Yeah. So um, until then, please keep checking our YouTube channel. Um, there's other great series on there. You can yeah. catch up on all of them. We'd love that. Uh, keep visiting our website. Keep checking us out on Facebook. We're going to yeah. do a couple things on Facebook for Facebook Lives in 2022 as well. So yeah. we hope to see you there. And the best thing, though, is to see you here in person visiting the museum, checking out some of the stuff we talked about today in person. It's really, there's nothing like just seeing it with your own eyes for yourself. Yes. Yes. Um, pictures are awesome, but it's cool to see the stuff in person. It is. So we hope to see you there or in the cyber world. Yes. Either way is acceptable. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hey, uh, I know we filmed in December, but Happy New Year. And uh, That's right. Happy New Year. Celebrating 2022. Our resolution is to... Get on this. Yes. Better. We had a hiccup. It wasn't all totally our fault last no, year. No, it wasn't. But some of it was, but we're going to... It's never totally our fault. That's but right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back on a pretty yeah, regular we're monthly basis, we're basis. So we'll see you guys, and uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.